This is my Pivot Firebird. A 170 mil front and rear, 27.5 wheeled enduro weapon. In monster trucks through rock gardens, and it's sturdy enough to lap up anything in its path. It feels right at home in the air, and above all, it's superbly quiet. But after 1500 kilometers of carefree riding, every bike needs some TLC. That was just a bad self-indulgent. I mean, just look at the slow-mo. Anyways, hello YouTube. Today, I'll be picking things apart and hopefully putting them back together in the correct order. A bit of quarantine bike overhaul, if you will. I'll be greasing everything up, replacing the frame protection, and uh, most importantly, servicing my Fox 36 fork, which is way overdue for some love. But first of all, I've noticed a lot of you watch my videos, but don't subscribe. What's up with that? Show some love and hit that big red sub button. Anyways, let's get into it. After a year of use, this bike's not looking too bad. The cranks have been replaced, because I'm an animal and I break stuff. The brakes too, because of a slippery root that sent me offline into a tree snapping my front brake lever. The rear wheel is a little out of true and has a bit of a flat spot, but it's held up pretty well with all things considered. The Fox suspension has done a superb job, but both the fork and the shock are way past their service intervals and they do need some love. Okay, so let's start by disassembling everything. This is a lot easier with the bike at the stand. Now, this bike has a DW linkage, which is implemented in such a way that rocks might get thrown up at the rear wheel and jam between the rear swing arm and the frame. This is why I always run a fender, to, to minimize the buildup of crud there. But this one's broken, so it's gotta go. Since day one, I've applied this protective plastic to the frame. It's basically like Invisi frame, only not pre-cut, so it only costs like 10 euros for a roll that's enough for two bikes. That's starting to wear out after a year of use, so it's got to get peeled off. Remarkably, the only damage to the frame I can see is this little scratch that barely penetrates the clear coat. Way to go, ghetto frame protection. Next up, I might as well remove the cranks and give everything a good clean. I haven't re-greased the axles since I installed it about six months ago. The shocks got to get sent off for service too. The Float X2 requires a bunch of specialist tools, which I don't have. The Fox 36 fork? Well, that's a different story, that I can service. So to drop the fork, I needed to remove the brake caliper and then undo the top cap and stem bolts. One sexy black Fox 36 fork, very much past its service interval. Teesh, that Sarnut needs replacing too. Since the fork is out, I might as well check the headset bearings and cups, clean everything and re-grease if necessary. So here we go, fork service. First, I jotted down all the settings, air pressure, how many clicks of rebound and compression damping, etc. Dial clicks are counted from completely closed or wound in all the way clockwise. It's easier to work with a fork flipped upside down in a stand. Gotta get all the air out of the fork. And when you think that all the air is out, just press that valve again, just to make sure. A two millimeter hex key unscrews the rebound adjuster cap. On my fork, the damper side is a 15 millimeter and the air spring side a 10 millimeter foot nut. These need to be loosened but left on by three threads. There's a bit of stiction between the lowers and the damper and the air shafts. So to loosen the lowers, I placed the appropriate side socket on the foot nuts and tapped carefully with a rubber mallet. Between the foot nuts and the lowers, there are these nylon crush washers. They'll have to be replaced later. With the fork vertically in the stand and an oil pan under it, I can now tap the lowers loose and remove them. There's a running theme in suspension servicing, and that's cleanliness. Here's the gist. Does it exist? If yes, clean it very thoroughly with degreaser, brake cleaner, or isopropyl alcohol, and a paper towel, until there isn't even an atom of dirt or grease left on it. Okay, now to get the air spring out. It's easier to do this with the fork flipped upside down. On the air spring side, there's a little retaining clip that needs to be removed. I popped that out with a plastic pry tool. Metal tools risk scratching the surfaces and that's about as big a no-no as you can find. Sometimes pressure builds up in the positive chamber, that's the air chamber closest to the valve. 
So I depressed the valve again and just pulled the air spring out. See all that grease? First of all, it's black, which is never particularly good. And then there's gobs of it, like way too much. Alrighty then, back to meticulously cleaning everything. The inside of the air leg can be cleaned with a paper towel soaked in alcohol, which can then be pressed through the air leg with a wooden dowel or any kind of stick, really. Now to get the old foam rings out. They sit right under the dust seals and tend to collect dirt that gets past the seals. And then they turn this wonderful crusty shade of black. See, here's where things can go drastically wrong. The dust seals are jammed in there pretty tight, so they need to be pried out with something strong, like a flathead screwdriver. A decent amount of force is needed to pry these suckers out, so I wrapped the screwdriver in a rag and carefully jammed it under the seal just above the top bushing and pushed down on it. And presto, the old seals popped out. All right. See, um, I've ordered the uh, seal press tool for uh, my fork, but it's not going to be coming for Easter. I don't think so. So that over there is my local bike store. Hashtag support your uh, local bike store. And I'm going to get them to uh, help me out with uh, pressing these seals in. All right. A bit of grease or Fox 20 weight oil goes a long way to help seat the seals easier. Now place the seal on the seal driver and just tap away with a rubber mallet. Seals seated flush against the lowers every single time. Finally it's time to put everything back together. First get a 32mm ground flush socket and remove the air cap. The ground flush part is pretty key, otherwise you'll be ordering a new air cap. I checked that the air cap seal is still in good condition and then lubricated it. Next up, the air spring. This doesn't require gobs of grease. A thin coating on all the seals is all that's needed. I then made sure I got every surface that something is gliding on and cycled the seal head up and down a few times. A bit of grease on the inside of the air leg and in goes the air spring. To equalize the pressures between the positive and negative air chambers, I depressed the valve while pushing the piston in. Snap that retaining clip back in its groove, again using a plastic tool. Give it a swirl just to make sure it's sitting tight and the air spring is as good as new. Remember those foam rings that had the color and consistency of burnt toast? They're getting replaced. I soaked a new pair in Fox 20 weight oil for a few minutes, making sure that they really absorb as much of the oil as they could. This should actually be done after putting the new foam rings back in, but to ease sliding the lowers onto the uppers, I dabbed a thin layer of grease onto the groove inside each wiper seal. Using a metal pick and making sure not to scratch the upper bushing, I then placed the foam rings in the space just under the dust seal. See, here's a trick to putting the lowers back on. First, with the fork upside down and making sure not to scratch anything inside the lowers, slide the lowers on. Then, with the lowers slightly off axis to the uppers, you can clip one part of the dust seal over the uppers and then just press down to get the rest of the uppers in. Onto the oil. My fork takes 40 cc of 20 weight fox oil into the damper side and 10 cc in the air side. For reference, if everything is mounted correctly, the damper side on the lowers is the one with the bigger hole. With the lowers slightly pulled out to reveal the bottom holes, I put the required amount of oil in each leg. The next step is to slide the lowers back up as far as they'll go and then replace the crush washers and the foot nuts on each side. Use a torque wrench or a really well calibrated hand here. I've managed to snap the entire damper shaft on a fork once by over tightening the foot nut. The only missing piece now is the rebound knob which screws onto the damper side with 2mm hex key. And now to see if this glorified pipe bomb will hold air. Remember I jotted down the fork and shock settings? I returned everything to those settings and make sure to cycle the fork every 20 or so psi as I was pumping it up to uh, equalize the positive and negative chamber. Now I'm not going to bore you with putting everything back together again. Let's just say it took my sweet time and use a torque wrench wherever I could. On to the more fun stuff though. Will she ride better or will she blow up into a million pieces?
Yep, definitely rides better. There's a tangible difference in the buttery smoothness of that fork. A little love really does go a long way to making a fork just feel that much better. And it's not like this job required anything else than, you know, tools that most people already have at home. And on that note, I'll end this video. There's ways to get stoked on bikes even if you are stuck inside. And if you're not, just get out and ride your bike, but keep your rubber side down. Either way, if you've gotten this far into the video, you might as well smash that big red subscribe button. There's plenty more content to come. All right, I'll see you in the next one.